This video is sponsored by PCBWay. Hey there, this is Seth Schaefer from Team Just Cause Robotics, and in today's video, we are going to talk about my very weapon-centric robot division and its weapon system. I'll talk about the weapon blades, how self-writing works, and the different aspects that go into choosing what blade to use for what different opponent, and the pros and cons of each. As Division is inspired by Deep Six, it's obviously very weapon-centric, so this is an important topic to cover. The blades on Division can weigh up to about 9 ounces, and the spinning mass in total is about 30% of the weight of the robot. The weapon motor driving the weapon can supply more than one horsepower to it. And this is just a three pound robot, so that is an absolutely monstrous motor. You can see I have stuck some blue masking tape onto the motor so you can see it spinning, and it is coupled such that every three rotations of the motor is exactly one rotation on the weapon. I'm gonna try and keep this video light of math and a lot more general audience centric, but if you want to deep dive into the mathematics that goes behind designing a powerful robot weapon, I have a series of videos on that that I've linked in the description, the first video in that series is like a half hour diving into all of the physics equations that describe how a weapon could perform, and the different aspects you should consider when designing one. Since this video is going to be a lot more casual, none of this is scripted, I'm just going completely off the cuff, so if it seems a bit scatterbrained, that's why. However, I did want to make a couple announcements off the bat. First off, um, I bought five Division Weapon Discs. I currently am planning to use one of them. I gave a second one away to somebody who is going to be making Division's chassis for me, which will save me a ton of work and time. And I have three more that I'm going to list for sale on my web store. The blades I'll be selling are 100% identical to the one you see on the robot right now. They weigh 8.2 ounces. They're made out of quarter inch thick AR-500 armor plating steel, the same stuff that shooting targets are made out of and they will break things if you put them on a robot. So if you hurt yourself, please don't hold me liable or sue me. If you kill yourself, it would be very difficult for you to sue me. Um, but still, just like, don't please. A lot of the parts you see on the robot were laser cut by Send Cut Send. The forks in the front are 8th inch thick titanium. The blade AR-500, like I said, the uprights are quarter inch thick 70-75 aerospace grade aluminum which is about 80% stronger than the 6061 aluminum I used last time. However, I have heard anecdotally that 7075 is a little bit more brittle, and when it fails, unlike 6061, which tends to bend, 7075 tends to crack. Um, and since I did have 6061 uprights bend on Division version 2, I decided that I would get some backup 6061 uprights in case the 7075 ones fail. So I have enough uprights to build six divisions currently. Material science in combat robots is sort of a gigantic monster topic, and I haven't covered it yet simply because I think it would take forever to really cover everything. But if you'd like me to try and take a stab at it, let me know in the comments below. Um, at the very least, I could probably talk about different aluminum alloys, their strengths and weaknesses, different steels and steel alloys and their strengths and weaknesses, and then very briefly, well, I've already kind of covered plastics in my 3D printing video, but at least compare the plastics world to the aluminum world to the steel world and some of the fancier materials like magnesium that we also use in Bloodsport even. And of course titanium, which I'm using for my forks and the front wedges on this version of Division. So you'll notice in the background of this video, I am testing a bunch of different weapons and just kind of trying to test hitting things and seeing how the robot reacts. That's because the geometry of this is very different from Division version 2, so I'm not entirely certain how it's going to react to hits. The wheels have been moved much further back. They're currently about as far back as I can reasonably get them without them super far sticking out at the back of the robot. I wanted to make sure that the gears driving the wheels are not sticking out, and there are only a few millimeters of tread beyond where the gears are, since I needed the largest gear possible in order to get the most drive reduction possible, since the bot, like I said in my last design video, would top out at 30 miles an hour otherwise. Um, so I basically have it set up such that I have the tread of the wheels just barely peeking out the back. Um, I'm possibly going to stick some stuff onto the back of the robot to make it a little bit harder for it to wheelie like it currently does when I accelerate forward too hard, 
but you'll notice that the way that it self writes currently actually works surprisingly well without anything sticking off the back, which I was pleasantly surprised to see. The thing I'm hitting in this clip, by the way, is some sort of turbine fan thingy. I don't really know. I found it in a box on a shelf labeled free stuff for personal use or whatever at work. And uh, th this is a, a use, right? Before I broke tons of pieces off of it, it weighed a bit more than a pound. You can see that Division is able to hit it into the roof of my test box no problem, which is why all of these tests were performed with the weapon at like up to 50% speed, which still gives it way more energy than it needs to roof shot even a three pound robot. Like I said, I want to keep the math out of this video, but just for reference, the amount of kinetic energy that is stored in this weapon can be turned into a gravitational potential energy used to see how high you can raise a mass of, say, three pounds. Um, so at full speed, one of my blades, like the one on the robot now, stores enough energy to raise a three pound robot four feet in the air 34 times. <laughs> All of the slow motion footage you see in this video was recorded with my Sony ZV-1 camera at 960 frames per second, and it's played back typically at 24 frames per second for 40 times slower than real time. That means that while my camera can only record up to about 1.95 seconds, it plays back in almost 80 seconds. So you are seeing what looks like a bunch of pieces of debris flying around on the International Space Station simply because gravity is taking effect at 1 40th of the speed that it normally would. Look at that thing, just floating in midair. Not a care in the world. All the other weapons I've shown so far in this video are ones I've used in past versions of the robot, but this is a brand new weapon that I call the Super Light Slicer, and you're going to see why shortly. The Super Light Slicer has by far the lowest weight of any of my weapon options, and it has the lowest moment of inertia as well, meaning that it spins up the fastest, I can keep it running at a high tip speed with less gyroscopic forces while turning, and it should allow me to run it at nearly full speed and be in full control the whole time. That way I can win tip speed wars against other vertical spinners or beater bars, and if I'm fighting anything that isn't going to hit it horizontally, it should be able to take the hits no problem. It also has a super sharp cutting edge with a high rake angle to slice straight through plastic like you just saw. Even with discounts from Send Cut Send, these parts aren't cheap, so now it's time to thank this video's sponsor, PCBWay. PCBWay made these custom PCBs for Division, and they'll make any kind of PCB that you design that you need fabricated as well. They also offer an amazing CNC machining service. You can get parts cut out of steel, titanium, aluminum, and more, or even get a lot of parts made out of sheet metal, similar to what Send Cut Send offers if you're outside of the United States. They also have industrial 3D printing, but they're known best for having fantastic customer service and producing great quality parts on all of their different manufacturing methods. Check out my sponsor PCBWay at the link in the description below. Now at this point in the video, some of you are probably yelling at me saying, why the hell would you design this stupid thin bar weapon? It's going to make it so hard to self-write. Uh, well, you see, I don't think that you understand what I was talking about earlier with the amount of motor power that we're dealing with here. This is a full speed spin up of the disc blade, which has by far the highest moment of inertia of any of my weapon options. 
That means that it takes the longest to spin up of any of my blades, and it has the most gyro of any of my blades as well. The way that Moments of Inertia works is basically the more mass you have further away from the center axle, the harder it is to spin the thing. And as you can see, there is a solid ring of steel that's pretty far from that central axle. The way that Moment of Inertia is calculated, it's basically mass times the radial distance squared. In Imperial units, that means we are dealing with units of ounces inch squared, and for the metric system, we have kilogram meters squared or kilogram meter, millimeter squared or whatever. So in Imperial units, the disc's moment of inertia is about 55 ounce inches squared. The super light slicer, however, has the lowest of my weapon options at about 28.7. So about half that of the disc. You can see the disc has a solid ring of material that's pretty far away from that center axle. If that ring of material weighed the same but was at half the radial distance, then the weapon would have one quarter of the moment of inertia that it currently has. However, then I would have these super long spokes that weren't supported by anything and it would be really easy for it to bend. And as we saw in a previous video, it already is able to bend in its current configuration, so that would be really bad. The super light slicer has a relatively thin cross-sectional area that's pretty far out, which means that I'm not going to be using it to take any horizontal hits, but that's what the cutter blade is for. The super light slicer is for being nimble and fast to attack, and it isn't going to be an all-rounder option like the cutter blade is. Rather than being dead in the middle between the two, the cutter blade's moment of inertia is 36.1, making it a lot more on the low end so that I can still turn relatively quickly while using it. Because it gets twice the bite of my symmetrical weapons, it really doesn't need to be spun at full speed anyway to be able to deliver massive hits, but when I do spin it at higher speeds, it'll deliver bigger hits than even the disc, despite storing less energy, simply because I can get the tooth to engage twice as far into my opponent with every shot. Bite is simply a measure of how much distance is closed between your weapon and the opponent in the time it takes for your weapon teeth to come around and then hit them. Basically, the further into your opponent that you get your tooth, the more energy transfers to the opponent. With the Cutter Blade, I start with more than 60% of the energy of the disc, but I can transfer twice as much of that. <laughs> Why don't we just take a moment to appreciate some more footage of Division destroying stuff. What you all want to see. Just some closing thoughts here. I want to thank everybody who's been supporting me through this channel, through buying Divisions PCBs and other products from my store, and all of the amazing support I've gotten through different viewers in the comments when I meet people at events and everything. It's really encouraging and it's really that engagement with my fans that keeps me motivated to do this sort of thing. That said, it also really helps when people buy stuff because through sales I was able to afford something like this bench grinder you see here which was the cheapest one that I could find at Harbor Freight, 
but it made it so much faster and easier to clean up all these weapons so it could make this awesome video for you guys and actually mount them to my robot and have them cut through things effectively. Since when they arrive from Send Cut Send, there's usually some dross or some melted steel slag on the edges that needs to be cleaned off. Anyway, my channel has hit 3,700 subscribers and now 3,800 subscribers just in the last 30 days due to the amazing support I've gotten from my recent BattleBots focused videos. But I don't want that to come to my head and stop making awesome videos like this that show how other people can actually get into this sport without spending $40,000 on a BattleBot. I really believe that the 3 pound class, or even the 1 pound class, are the best ways to get involved in combat robotics. And while the stuff that I'm doing is somewhat advanced and expensive, there's certainly ways to get into this sport at these weight classes that I think almost anybody can do, as long as you can get knowledge through sources like my YouTube channel to do so. It's always been my mission with this YouTube channel and my web store and business to try and get more people involved in this sport by lowering the barrier of entry, by providing people with the knowledge and the skills and the parts needed to build your robots at an affordable price and without wasting thousands of hours learning things entirely on your own. If you want to support me in that mission, the best way is to visit my web store, buy things like the three division blades that I'm selling or division's PCBs, or you can even utilize my 3D printing service that I offer to bot builders, where I can 3D print parts for your bots in nylon, carbon fiber nylon, flexible TPU, or any other random filament that you might need that can be printed on a Prusa Mark 3S or an Artillery Sidewinder X2. Anyway, that's all I've got for today. Um, let me know in the comments if you had any questions I didn't answer about Division's weapons or weapon system. Um, make sure to check out the link to the weapon design series if you're interested in that. Also, let me know in the comments what you thought about the music in this video. I kind of switched things up a bit. I'm experimenting with this sort of dark uh, synthwave theme music that I found. Um, so definitely give me some feedback on that, whether you liked it or you prefer the sort of chiller stuff I had going before. Um, yeah, that's pretty much all I've got, though. Um, make sure to subscribe if you enjoyed this video and want to see more videos like it. Hit the like button as well. And if you didn't like this, let me know why in the comments or hit the dislike button in case that does anything. Thanks for watching.